Today I will deliver the basic anatomy and aesthetics of nose regarding rhinoplasty in short. So, next slide, come to the uh, surface landmarks as because uh, the surface landmarks is very important for measurement and decision making in rhinoplasty. So, uh, at first come to the uh, glabella, it is a midpoint uh, between the two uh, superciliary uh, bridge and uh, come to the uh, nasion point which is very important and it is the junction between the frontal bone and the nasal bone we know and uh, the area related to the nasion uh, is the radix area. So come to the uh, this point which is uh, rhinion which is a junction between the nasal uh, bone and upper lateral cartilage and uh, it is a keystone point very important point for the uh, uh, dorsal asterisks. So, number four is the super tip area. This is the tip area. This is the infra tip lobule, and this is the columella. Uh, in lateral view, we find the, uh, this area, which is the alar crease area, which is very important for the measurement of the uh, tip projection and tip angulation. So, next. Uh, some topographic landmarks and areas. So, uh, in the lateral view, we are uh, demonstrating the upper lateral cartilage and the lower, lower lateral cartilage and the junction. <laughs> this area, uh, this, uh, this junction is called the scroll area, which is very important for the uh, tip stability. Next. So, uh, in lateral view, we see the radix area. There is the central radix area and lateral radix area. This is the scroll area and super tip and tip area. Next. Next. Layer, there is the smash layer, deep fatty layer and uh, perichondrium and peri uh, uh, periosteum layer. We usually dissect, our dissection plane is the supra perichondrial or supra periosteum layer. There is a deep fatty layer. Next. So, uh, this is the uh, picture before rhinoplasty. Skin thickness is uh, uh, various skin thickness present in various portion of the nose, uh, in the midline especially. Uh, the skin thickness is thickest in the upper one third and it is the thinnest in the middle third and it is very variable in the lower one third. So, no. So, uh, uh, we should uh, take decision uh, before operation in thin skin as because minor irregularities are easily detectable in thin skin patient after rhinoplasty. And in case of thick skin, uh, the refinement and narrowing of the nasal uh, tip may be obscured after operation. So, this is challenging and sometimes we have to overcorrect the nasal tip. Next. So, uh, come to the nasal valves. We divide the nasal uh, nose in two valves. There is a bony vault and cartilaginous vault. Uh, again, the cartilaginous vault is divided into upper and lower cartilaginous, cartilaginous vault. In bony vault, composed of the nasal bone and frontal process of maxilla. Uh, this nasal bone is uh, thick in the upper part and progressively become thinner in the lower part and uh, form a junction with the upper lateral cartilage. Uh, this is the which form the keystone point or K point. So, this uh, area is uh, very important during rhinoplasty surgery as because uh, um, uh, destruction of this area may call uh, the open roof deformity or inverted B deformity. So, this is the bony, bony vault. Next, come to the next, come to the cartilaginous vault. The upper lateral cartilage actually underlay the nasal bone for 6 to 8 millimeter and the junction form a tight synchrondrosis. It called the keystone area which is formed by the upper lateral cartilage and nasal bone and also by the dorsal septum and internally it forms a T-shaped structure. It forms a T-shaped structure with the septum, upper lateral cartilage and nasal bone. So this is the keystone area and this area extends down to the scroll area which is the junction between the upper and lower lateral cartilage. So, we find two important areas. There is the keystone area, which is important for the stability of the dorsum. And we found a scroll area, 
which is important for the stability of the nasal tip. Next. Next. So, uh, come to the lower lateral vault. Lower lateral vault uh, comprises of medial cura, medial cura, and this is the medial cura, this is the lateral cura, and this is the middle cura. So, the structure is important for tip projection and maintenance of the normal nasal airway. So, we uh, learn, uh, we will uh, discuss later in the tip section of the lower lateral cartilage. So, next. So, come to the muscular system. Nasal muscle can be divided into four groups. That is elevator muscle, depression muscle, compression muscle, and minor dilator muscle. Next. Uh, <coughs> elevator muscle, they shorten uh, the nasal length and dilate nostril, uh, comprise of the procerus muscle and the levator labi superioris allocu nasi muscle. Next. So, this is the compressor muscle. Transverse, uh, including transverse nasalis muscle and compressor nariz minor muscle. And there is a minor dilator muscle, that is the dilator nariz anterior muscle. Next. Depressor muscle, which lengthen the nasal length and dilate nostril, including the dilator nariz posterior muscle and depressor safety nasi muscle. Next. So, uh, come to the ligaments. Uh, there is very imp uh, important ligaments uh, for the stability of the tip. There is the interdomal ligament uh, connects the two middle crura at the cephalic junction of the infralobular segment, and then come to the intercrural ligament uh, connects the medial border of the alar cartilage throughout their length. Another ligament is the pitanguid ligament, which is very important. Pitanguid describes a ligament originating from the undersurface of the dermis and running uh, throughout the alar cartilage which is sometimes preserved for the tip stability and sometimes it is ligated uh, in case of tip positioning. Next. So come to the nasal septum. We all know the about the nasal septum. Nasal septum is formed by both bone and cartilage. The ethmoid and vomar provide the uh, bony support posteriorly and the uh, quadrangular cartilage provide the support anteriorly. So next. 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 So, it is also important for the uh, maintenance of the nasal patency and for functioning nose, nasal valve play an important role. Uh, we have two nasal valves, that is external nasal valve formed by the lower lateral cartilage and uh, nasal septum. And another is internal nasal valve, which is formed by the nasal septum and the upper lateral cartilage. Uh, for proper nasal patency, uh, we should maintain a angle between uh, which is between the 10 to 15 degree angle between this uh, septum and upper lateral cartilage. So, so this is the nasal valve angle of internal nasal valve, which should uh, be between the 10 to 15 degree for maintenance of the uh, of a functional nose and for maintenance of the nasal patency. So, I will continue uh, from my last slide. There is the uh, nasal valve which is very important to maintain the nasal patency. There is the external nasal valve and internal nasal valve. Uh, we, uh, uh, there is the angulation between the septum and upper lateral cartilage which form the internal nasal valve. Next. And uh, the angulation should be maintained 15 to 10, uh, 10 to 15 degree to maintain the nasal patency and airway for a functioning nose. So, next slide. Come to the blood supply of the nose. In short, uh, we have the uh, blood supply from the facial artery and uh, ophthalmic artery in the nose. We have the columnar artery, important artery supply of the external nose is the columnar artery. The lateral nasal artery and the dorsal nasal artery, they form a alar arcade to supply the external nose. Next. 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 We all know the um, internal supply of the nose. Uh, they form a lesions area in the septum, consisting of the sphenopalatine, greater palatine, superior labial artery, and anterior ethmoidal artery. Next. So come to the nerve supply. Uh, <coughs> the sensory nerve supply of the skin of the external nose is supplied by the ophthalmic and maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. Branches of the supra, uh, supratrochlear and infratrochlear supply the skin region of the radix and rhinion. 
and lower half the, of the nose is supplied by the infraorbital nerve and the external nasal branch of the anterior modal nerve. So next. 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 So come to the uh, surface aesthetics. Uh, we just the, uh, not only the nose, we just the whole face before endoplasty. So uh, we draw a uh, dorsal aesthetic line from the superciliary arch along the radix area up to the dome defining point in the both uh, right and left side. So this is the dorsal aesthetic line. And uh, we, there is a, not previous slide, previous slide, previous. And uh, there is, uh, in aesthetics, we uh, just the alar, uh, we just the alar width, and sh this should be equal to the intercanthal distance, and the dorsal uh, width should be 80% of the alar width. Next. Next. So, uh, come to the dorsal uh, radix and dorsal aesthetics. The depression of the uh, frontal nasal um, uh, angle. Uh, here is the nasion, uh, and this is the radix area. The depression of the nasofrontal uh, depression, uh, depth uh, for, uh, is calculated from the corneal level, and this should be four to nine millimeter in uh, normal aesthetic. So it uh, can be acute angle, it can be uh, adequate angle, and it can be obtuse angle. So nasofrontal angle is uh, about 115 to 130 for, uh, uh, for aesthetic purpose. So next. Next. So uh, we should learn the subunit of LR cartilage for the purpose of tip modification. So there is a, a, a three part. There is the lateral crust of the uh, alar cartilage. It is the medial crust, and another is the middle crust. So medial crust has the foot plate segment, columnar segment. Middle crust uh, has the dorsal segment, and there is a lateral crust. Picture of the lateral crust. Uh, next. Next. So come to the tip characteristics, which is very important. Uh, there is a T volume, refers to the size of the lateral crust. So next to the T definition, is, uh, it is the convexity of the domal segment and the concavity of the lateral crust with its sur surface expression. So T width, T width is the interdomal distance, which is about 6 to 8 millimeter in female and 8 to 10 millimeter in me male for ideal T width. Tip position, what is tip position? It is the distance from the alar crease to the tip. It is important for uh, decision making in dinoplasty. Ideal tip projection should be two third of ideal dorsal length. So come to the tip rotation. What is tip rotation? It is a tip angle and measured from the vertical plane of alar cartilage to the tip, which is 100 in case of male and 105 in case of female. So tip shape it can be three types. There is broad tip, bulbous tip, and boxy tip. Next. So come to the nasal tip anatomy and aesthetics. This is the tip diamond, which is formed by the two domal point. This is the supra tip break, and this is the columnar break. And uh, this form a tip diamond. And uh, look at the uh, lateral cross direction. It is, the, it is 45 degree with the midline and towards the lateral canthus of the eye. Uh, th so this is the tip projection. Uh, we draw a uh, line from the alar crease to the nasal tip. And this tip projection is the two third of the dorsal length of the nose. Next. So there are various types of teeth. There is bi bifid tip, bulbous tip, and boxy tip, and amorphous tip. Next. So this is the tip, uh, uh, tip angle. It is uh, 100 in case of male and in 105 in case of female. It can be upward rotated and it can be downward rotated. It is uh, along the dorsal, dorsal line. So again, this is the tip projection, which is drawn from the alar crease to the tip point. 
and it can be over projected or under projected next next so uh, very important is the tip support there is anderson uh, tripod method conjoining the medial cura both medial cura and two lateral cura represent the three leg of tripod this is the anderson tripod for tip support and major tip support is the size shape resilience of middle and lateral cura fibrous attachment of the middle cura fit to the caudal septum fibrous attachment of the caudal margin of the upper lateral cartilage and cephalic margin of the lower lateral cartilage there is a scroll area next there is minus tip support there is the interdomal ligament which is called uh, sometimes we call the pituitary ligament uh, pitangui ligament there is a ligamental string between the alar cartilage cartilaginous septal dorsum sesamoid complex attachment of the alar cartilage to the underlying skin and musculature and nasal spine and membranous septum gives the minor support to the tip next 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 so uh, come to the base aesthetic next so in base uh, their uh, columnar part should be two third and lobular part should be one third and uh, the basal width should be equal to the intercanthal distance next we count uh, four uh, four component in the uh, base uh, aesthetic uh, that is the alar width columella columella lobular angle and nostril there should be retracted alar rim there should be overhanging hanging columella and there may be combination of both the columella and ang uh, lobular angle should be 45 degree uh, for the aesthetic purpose next 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 so there is uh, we will review the quick pre operative aesthetics in photography we take different view there is the frontal view there is the lateral oblique view lateral view basal view and helicopter view next and uh, the interface uh, facial aesthetic not only nose uh, should be calculated before surgery as because the asymmetrical face uh, in post operative period may cause dissatisfaction so we uh, describe the face um, we uh, describe the face actually in the rule of th third and rule of fifth next we divide the face in uh, five part between the middle canthus line and lateral canthus line and uh, between the ear um, lobule and uh, particularly we divide the face in uh, three part so again we should uh, draw a dorsal aesthetic line and we all already know the base width should equal to the intercanthal distance of the eye and it is wider if it is wider than this the ala base this section should be done and bony base should be 80% of the alar base width if it is wider th than this consideration should be given to narrowing this at the time of osteotomy so uh, we already discussed the tip defining point there is a dome point super uh, super tip break and columnar break point and we also discussed the radix area the depth of the nasofemoral depression should be approximately 4 to 9 mm enter to the corneal plane the depth of the radix can greatly affect the nasofrontal angle. The ideal nasofrontal angle is between 115 to 130 degrees. The nasofrontal angle tends to more acute in case of male and more obtuse in women. So we already uh, done the tip projection. For, it is from the alar crease to the tip and it is two third of the dorsum of the nose. So nasal tip projection already discussed so tip rotation it is nothing but the tip angle uh, a line drawn from the uh, alar crease to the tip and the angulation is the 90 to 95 in men and uh, 95 to 100 in women so columnar lobular angle again should be approximately 45 degree basal view there should be equalized triangle should be visualized the ratio of the columella to the lobular part of the nose is 2 is to 1 
The nostrils should be teardrop shaped with long axis from the apex to the base oriented in a slightly lateral direction. <coughs> so at last we should, uh, we should maintain the nasal patency by maintaining the internal nasal valve and external nasal valve and there should be uh, 10 to 15 degree, uh, uh, degree gap to maintain the uh, patency of the internal valve to maintain a patent nose to maintain a functioning nose. So that's all about the, in short, about the anatomy and aesthetic anatomy of the nose regarding rhinoplasty. So thank you all.